I have a confession to make. I am a documented. I'm a dreamer. I know most of you are probably wondering, what was she talking about, undocumented? Well, when I was only eight months old, my parents decided to cross the border to bring my sister and I to have a better life in America. They wanted us to have a life full of opportunities, something that they never really had in Mexico. So when I was growing up, my parents taught me the importance of having an education. You see, my dad, he never went past the sixth grade. He had to drop out to help his family and provide for them. They wanted us to have a life full of opportunities, and so I became this overachiever in high school. I did sports, I did clubs, I did everything. I wanted to make my parents proud of me. But there'd always be that one thing that set me apart from everyone else, and it became pretty obvious by the time everyone came of age, and they were getting cars, and they were getting licenses, and anytime anyone would ask me, Bibi, have you gotten your driver's license? And I would say, no, you know, I'm too busy. I and I knew deep down that I did, but I, but I couldn't. And so when graduation was just a few months away, I realized that I couldn't work, I couldn't drive, I couldn't apply for financial aid. Proposition 300 uh, triples the cost of tuition for me, and things seemed pretty bleak. So I told myself, no, it's okay, baby. I'll figure this out. I'll figure this out. But by the time graduation had come and passed, I realized that I had run out of time. And I was devastated that I had all these awards and I had been accepted to multiple universities and I just it didn't have the money. It was ridiculously expensive for, for an undocumented student. And I remember distinctly confiding in a counselor and asking her for help, like, help me, please. And I remember her telling me, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. And it broke my heart. I didn't know what to do, I didn't know where to go, and school wasn't the only thing I had to worry about as an undocumented person. And I became afraid of being outside. You know, I didn't want to risk being separated from my family. You know, every day I'd hear about a new raid happening somewhere near my house, and I became afraid for my dad. He had to go out and find work and provide for us, and I was afraid that I'll never see my dad again. You see, the media, they perceive us all to be the same. We're criminals, we're illegal, we're this. And I knew I couldn't identify myself as any of these things. I was just a kid who wanted to go to college. And so with a group of people, we started looking. And eventually, I get this letter. And it says, congratulations, you won a scholarship. And I was so happy. And I was crying for what felt like forever. I was, I was really happy. And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, it wasn't a lot of money, but, you know, I, I was able to go to one class a semester at Phoenix College, and I was able to get more college credit through another institute. And, you know, it wasn't like your typical college experience, but, you know, hey, I'm going to college. And June 15th is a day that I'll never forget. My life literally turns upside down. The president announces deferred action for childhood arrivals, and I'm at the office of the Arizona Dream Act Coalition when I heard the news, and I'm the first one crying, and I end up on the news. And I was so overwhelmed with emotions. And my teacher, she, she saw my story on the news, and she decided to share it with all her friends, and one of them reached out. <laughs> and one of them reached out, and, and from the kindness of her heart, wanted to donate money to my education. And I was crying again. <laughs> and so for all the counselors and politicians who made me feel like I couldn't get my education, guess what? I'm, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> 15, 15 years ago, 15 years ago when my parents first told me, Bibi, get yourself educated, I took that to heart and I think about that every single day. And my mom, who's sitting in the audience, yeah. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her and all my friends and all my teachers. And now, I'm two and a half years later since graduating, I'm studying to be a teacher. And, uh, and so I hope to one day tell all my students that education knows no borders. Thank you.